This week in comic books, AWA brings us Man's World. Yes, thank you. I want to go there. I'm sure there's some lesson to be learned at some point, but right now I really like that place. Over in DC, we find out Future State is kind of telling some good stories, and we're going to break down two of my favorite this week. Also over in the land of Marvel, what is that Chris Claremont anniversary issue? What exactly was that about? The Nothing? Nobody's got anything? R roll the intro. What's going on, you wonderful weirdos? I'm Pokey Joe, and as always, you're super cool for swinging by. Thanks for swinging by. We're going to run down this week's comic books. I'm going to say some words about them, and I'm actually going to stay, like, majority positive in this one because a lot of good stuff came out, and then, like, some things that we kind of knew would let us down kind of let us down. But we're going to talk about them. The first thing we're going to talk about is this whole dark detective thing, issue number one. Uh, we kind of were hinted at this story in the other Batman. It's a poorer Batman, right? He lost off his money, only this one takes place in the future because it's future state. It, I'm still kind of confused how this works because this ended or this started the way that one ended, but it's in a different timeline for different reasons, I, I guess. I, I, I don't know, but it was still really cool. Uh, really like the story in here. Uh, the whole Batman's dead thing, the vigil anti thing is no longer should be a thing. So we got this zero one guy or robot thing running around chasing. It's just good classic comic book fun in its most simplistic form. And then it rolls right into a story with the grifter. You remember the grifter? The guy that made wearing a mask popular before 2020. Uh, he's running around with guns and stuff in here. Although he's dealing with Lucius Fox's son, who is kind of sort of maybe part of the Batman family in this timeline too. I'm having a little trouble. To, you see where the confusion starts? Like, it doesn't make much sense. But the story, the story, just don't think about the Batman thing. Consider this its own thing, because it technically is. It's still really good. However, it's this whole Lucius Fox's son, Batman thing. Um, he, he didn't really do a whole lot in this one, and you would think he would be able to, but nah. Uh, but Grifter's in it. He's a wise-ass, um, and he's not trying to be the hero. He's just stuck being the hero, and I think that's a great way to put that whole wrap up in that story definitely one of my favorites this week surprisingly it's good to see dc kind of bam right back into it all right so we're going to jump into a justice league so how do we make again this is where the lines get blurred i don't know if we're actually dealing in another dimension or just a whole new group of people or whatever the case may be the assumption is another dimension right that that's what we were kind of told but they keep referring to the old justice league in the old way it worked so i, I don't know so justice league and this new justice league with our new characters um no fraternization no real names no hanging out after hours none of that right just keep it professional and elite right and of course they're gonna break the rule because they're all kids they're young. It's more like the Teen Titans in this thing. I don't know. They're all super young. I guess it's supposed to be super hip or whatever. Um, cool characters. Powers are pretty. We've seen these powers before. But the story in here is really good. I like this T.O. Morrow guy. Tomorrow. I like that whole concept. I love the concept of this hyper clan coming out of nowhere. And um, taking on the appearance of our Justice Leaguers and capturing them. And that happened in here. So that's kind of a fresh take on on what you thought would be a normal story, but it turns out not so much. And this whole Legion of Doom thing, uh, the way they got dispatched pretty quickly for Hyper Clan, Hypers, that straight up sounds like something from the 90s. Comment below if you remember the 90s and everything was extreme and hyper, and then we all just kind of mellowed out. Also, Justice League Dark story in here, too. Equally good. Apparently, Merlin has crushed the entire world for magic, and he's outlawed it, and he's got Black Knights. I've been kind of out of Justice League Dark. So, I don't, again, I don't know if we're dealing with another dimension in this one. I, I got a feeling this is going to be the constant thing with DC, where they're just going to kind of jump in and out as, you know, to kind of push the plot of a story. But regardless, uh, John Constantine... Um, the Demon Aragon is inside of Bobo, which was kind of, you know, my favorite character in DC. A chimpanzee with a sword. That it just makes me happy just thinking about it. 
join me in a thought experiment. Think of a chimpanzee carrying like a knight's arming sword. He's like waving it around all mad. Awesome. Got that in here. So good stuff. Moving on. Last book from DC. We got um, American Vampire 1976 and all of its grooving the sun. Uh, Bicentennial president's uh, been uh, kind of manipulated by a demon type character. Uh, but we finally get our team together. So we have our monster hunters and our vampires working as a team to go fight this high council of monsters that are older than anything else, which is the uh, story all the time in these kind of things. But we're going to launch forward and we run into the giants that apparently like to eat everybody. That's where they left us off. Still fun, but this is not a single issue to read on its own. You definitely need the entire series to understand what's going on in there. Okay, uh, question. What what was this all about? So, uh, mm, this was a mess. <laughs> so, we jump around from stories. There's also the artwork in the beginning and then the end where they were kind of dealing with... That is just horrible art. I hate it when they put that in a comic book. Uh, yeah, and then they put it here. And then they kind of jumped around playing with different types of art in different places. Um, and this one, what I gather from Moonstar's traveling from, I guess timelines where she's chasing down shadow the shadow the shadow hunter shadow star the shadow whatever um and one of them takes him back into the early days of the fantastic four and this was just stupid i know your secret weakness you're ticklish ha 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 as with the different alternate of of um fantastic four characters so there's like one where sue's married to Reed Richards, which they all are, technically. and But he's Doom, and so she turns into, like, an evil Doom with him. And then one where Sue's married to Namor because Reed died. And then the Fantastic Four teams, as we know them, they're trying to escape out of some hellish nightmare where they're fighting each other. And the women are, like, going against the men, and all the Sues separate to go battle somebody. For some reason, like, Moonstar's just kind of dropped in there to fight in the battle, too. This all started with Hela saying, if you want to keep the horsey, you got to be a Valkyrie. And I'm like, what? why is that a thing? What? Where is that rule written? Like, Black Knight rode how many of those Valkyrie horses? And they're they're not like, hey, you got to get boobs now and, and uh, be a Valkyrie. That, that never happened. So, I, I don't know. Then we got one uh, where she kind of jumps in between the fight between uh, Rogue and uh, what at that time was another version of... Captain Marvel, uh, for some reason in that fight too. And then we kind of start getting this, this kind of weird thing where we're kind of actually dealing with, um, oh, what's the character's name? There's the one with Gambit uh, where he's fighting and it's the shadow guy. Yeah, shadow guy. But anyway, it doesn't matter. You know why it doesn't matter? Because the whole thing was about her needing confidence to, to battle the shadow person. That... Thanks, Chris. The artwork, where it did hit when it was telling the stories, was on point. The rest of it was garbage. Um, this this is just a mess. I don't know why it exists. Like, don't get me wrong. I appreciate everything Chris Claremont has done in comic books. I, I, I think he's an extraordinary individual. But I, I just, this particular issue, I mean, to say that everything he wrote was good would be a lie, too, right? So, and unfortunately, we're going to have to stick this over in the not-so-good stuff. That stuff. All right. But we'll move on to something good, right? Thunderbolts. This new Thunderbolts team is great. It's funnier than the Suicide Squad, and it doesn't make, like, weird statements. So in this one, we get Taskmaster, Mr. Fear, which I think is hilarious, both of them, since they kind of look the same. One just looks more like a methed out version of Taskmaster. That's Mr. Fear. Uh, we get that star character, we get Rhino, and we get Batrock the Leaper, right? Because God knows you got to have a French guy in there. And they're, they got to go to Ravencloft to get Osborne, right? You're not told that in the beginning. That's, that's kind of the drop. Spoilers. It's a comic book review show. But they got to go get him, right? So they got to go through the city while the symbiotes are attacking, right? And they see, like, the street-level heroes doing their thing. Well, anyway, before the state gets too deep, we see the snake lady, Snakehead, I think is her name. She was on the team. Notice I didn't mention her because she lasted a whole 10 minutes in the thing. It was kind of like the first person to die in a horror movie. Like, it's 
that quick. Gets eaten by a symbiote, and Rhino's like, yeah, I'm done. I'm, I'm leaving. <laughs> like, I don't want to do this. This is stupid. And, like, walks off. Another guy named Ampere does the same thing, but he ends up dying as well and getting taken over by a symbiote. But basically, your team right now, as it stands, is basically the Leaper, which is hilarious in this. Batrock is, is just hilarious in this. Taskmaster is kind of on point. He's kind of like a general flag type character in this whole thing. Star is kind of naive, but picking up on things while she's trying the superhero thing, I guess. And Mr. Fear, of course, is your wild card in the team, doing pretty much whatever he wants. For a tie-in, this is good. Is it important to the main story with the whole mole stuff going on? No, no, we'll get to that book in a minute. But for the most part, this is just a fun read, and it's humorous. It's good to see them using Wilson Fisk in it, Mr. Babyface himself. Um, which, I'm coming for you, Wilson Fisk, over at the Knockout. All right, moving on. Uh, Planet Symbiote. So this has... How do you describe this? Okay, so during the... And this is what's getting weird about Marvel. Any random issue from Marvel nowadays... Can apparently be a key. So during the ruins of Ravencroft, we get the history of Ravencroft. We find out that Cassidy had an ancestor way back then. Cassidy, meaning uh, Carnage, had an ancestor who was the first American serial killer, whatever. And there's a cult that believes in him, and the cult grew over the years or whatever. And this person is so important to Noel that he resurrects him from the dead and calls him the plague, right? Uh, okay, I'll buy it as long as the character has some sort of, like, reason to be there other than just be another henchman and that whole story was worthless uh also we get scream in this one that symbiote that can do the fire thing she comes in here and uh, apparently saves a kid so that's all we got as far as that but she may end up playing a role later in the fight because she says we need to bring the fight to null let's see what happens all right moving on the union uh, so the union Britannia dies Union Jack's in charge now. Okay. Uh, they go on one mission together. It was kind of sort of successful. And then the team's like, nah, we don't want to be a team. You know, when when Britannia, you know, recruited us, you know, that was hope and love and everything was cool. And we were really doing it for her. But this whole king and queen country thing, nah, we don't want to. We're out, son. And Union Jack's like, finds out that if he doesn't get the team together, he can go to jail because he signed some contract. Apparently, contracts in England are very strict. Comment below if you're in England and you're like, yeah, you can go to the tower if you don't, you don't pay your bill or whatever. Strict. All right, Immortal Hulk. I have no idea what's going on in this. The leader is in hell or the depths of hell, and he's working with Hulk's dad. He devoured him. They devoured him. That conversation goes back and forth. What's and the old Gamma Flight's gone, thank God. And some other random team that nobody's ever heard of before is going to be taking their place. But in the beginning, there's a quote. And if you're wondering where the quote came from, it came from a novel from 1859. Um, it's from, um, oh, what's the name of it? Yeah, it's George Eliot's character and Adam Beatty. Uh, Beatty is, this particular book is probably... If you've ever had to take an English lit class, you've read excerpts or something along, especially at a college level, more likely you read this. This was the book that kind of taught you how to, how to use dialogue, derivative dialogue, to drive a narrative within a story. And it does a very good job of that. Uh, and it's used in all coll or, yeah, college level English lit classes. That, that's not the interesting part of it. The interesting part of this is they actually tried that in here, and I think it came off kind of weird, where they were trying to use the dialogue to drive the story, and it just, it, it was just confusing. <laughs> that's, I'm just going to leave it at that. All right, Amazing Spider-Man. Hey, last issue, Kindred's in a glass box or something. Dad's trying to talk to him, and that was the whole comic book. In this one, Spider-Man's talking to Daddy Osborne the entire time about how he's going to stay away from everybody, and that that's... Or he's going to mess them up. Oh, and the spider people decide that they're going to make an organization within their organization, within their multiverse, called The Order. Was that confusing? There's a reason why. Because it doesn't make sense. All right, last but not least, Man's World from AWA. Like most AWA books, I generally like them the first few issues. And then they either my comic book shop stops carrying them. 
or I just kind of die out of it. But this one seems interesting. Um, basically, it's a bunch of bros that have known each other since childhood, and this is in the future, way in the future. And they're going to go to a planet that's called Man's World, M-A-N-N-S, but it's Man's World. Uh, there's booze, hunting, I'm assuming gambling, women, the whole nine yards. It's, it's just like a place to come party, right? Kind of like in Pinocchio. A hint of things to come. Well, anyway, they decide to go into the like the scrub village where all the employees work or live that work at the resort. And they go there and they cause a little trouble, piss off one of the guys. They're in their little spaceship thing hunting these dinosaur-looking things. Blows the thing up and crashes it. So basically, what do we got going on here? We're going to have the survival of the fittest type story and the haves and have-nots going against each other. Okay, I like survival type stories, especially in a group setting to kind of watch people get picked off because I'm sadistic that way. But I'll pick some more of this up as long as my comic book store has it. I will read it. All right, guys, that's my haul. Oh, no, it's not. I got some other things to show you. Hold on. Oh, yeah, you're going to like this. All right, uh, I picked up a Justice League of America number 37. You know why that's important? Because it's the first appearance of Mr. Terrific. And I love this picture right here. He's all... That's when everybody thought that's what a karate chop looked like. Super cool to get that and add it to my collection. And also I picked up... Oh yeah, Batman number 210. This is the Battle of the Sexes Batman. With Batman fights the Legion of Feline Furies. That's when they knew how to make a title. So those are my two... Uh, Silver Age books that I picked up. I've been trying to beef up my Silver Age collection. I think I'm doing okay. All right, guys. I'm sinking in my seat, but I got to get out of here. All right, so quick update. Don't forget about Blaster or Stash at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time right here on YouTube uh, where myself, Huey's Comics, and Spectacular Spider Grandpa. We're going to talk about all these books that we read. We have a chat, and we want you to come in and join us in the conversation if you liked any of these books or disliked any of these books. Consider it a place to give your opinion. Also, my Lex Luthor ring should be launching Hopefully this weekend, uh, the, the project's done. As a matter of fact, I'll show you the ring if you want to see it. There's the ring. I finished it. It glows in the dark. It looks like kryptonite. And I even made a second one where I kind of wanted to do some beveling to it. Because I thought that would be cool. Again, glows in the dark. Has kryptonite in it. That video will be coming out. Uh, hopefully I can get the editing done this weekend. Alright guys, I got nothing else. Talk to you all later. Bye.